All right, everybody, welcome. Here we go. We are building this old vintage kit from 1989, the Ravel 172 scale, Su-27. We think it's a flanker. Now, I have previously said in the unboxing and kit review that I declare this the worst flanker kit of all time. That's my statement. That's why I said what I said. Now, when I say that this is the worst flanker, I, I am going, and I'm going to say, I said this before and I'm going to say it again. I am not saying that it is the worst flanker in terms of build or fit or anything like that. There are some really bad kits out there. The Mini Hobby 148 flanker kits, terrible, terrible. But, but the point is, when you're done with those, even though they are a nightmare to assemble, if, if you do a good job and you're willing to put in the work, you have a flanker looking aircraft when it's all done. The, the, the panel lines and the parts, they look like a flanker. This guy, oh boy, this guy looks like an aircraft all its own. Um, it, it has the general, <laughs> the general outlines of a Su-27 flanker, but um, if you have not seen the unboxing of this thing, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put an, an you know I'm gonna put a little a little doohickey, the thingies that they do up there, and you can click on it. It'll take you a whole new window. You can pause this and you can watch it. But it is one of the most inaccurate flanker kits ever. I have no idea how it built. I just remember this from days of my youth as being a terrible looking kit, and I was right about it being terrible looking and inaccurate. And we're gonna see how it builds right now. Um, so. We're going to get down to business, and I'm anticipating this being a relatively quick build because of the lack of detail and the simplicity of the kit, but we'll see. We'll see how it all goes. So I hope you guys are, are in for a fun ride. We're going to get started with the very impressive cockpit. Yeah. There, and there's a grand total of if you count the fuselage, right? And, and, and we won't even count the seat. But there's a grand total of three five pieces that go into the whole cockpit, counting the fuselage up and bottom. So as I build this, just know I am doing nothing extra to this. I am building it exactly as it comes out of the box. Um, I'm not gonna sand and fill. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not gonna use anything aftermarket. I'm not gonna add anything to this. I'm not gonna modify it. I'm gonna build it exactly according to instruction specifications so we can see exactly what this kit looks like when it's all done. Um, I don't know. I might have spoken too soon. Maybe I'll sand and fill. Maybe. We'll see how it goes as we're going, but I just want to see what this kit really looks like. Accord again, according to instructions, including this bizarre angled stuff that they tell you to do, which, whatever. So, this is going to be mainly fast forward with uh, a little bit of, of music that I choose for us to listen to as we go. And I will cut in and I will uh, dictate and talk a little bit as uh, as necessary, really, basically, to describe what's going on. But other than that, let's get to it and let's see how this thing turns out. So, yep, I think that these turbine faces should be in front of that little ridge there so you can actually see them fully without them being blocked by it, but I am following the instructions exactly. That's the way it says it goes. That's the way I'm installing it. So looking at this, I said this in the unboxing, these panel lines are just arbitrary lines drawn in. These are not the real panels. These don't belong here. Um, so we have no actual panel lines. 
none of the small access panels that would be around the engines and the stinger is just completely wrong. This in fact, from a side view, looks more like a MiG-29 than a flanker. Um, yeah, um, the stinger should, should actually just blend, it should go all the way. I mean, there's just so much, but we are now going to look for the actual um, instrument panel, which is, are you ready for it? That's what we got. No decals. We're installing that baby in there. We're painting it black. And that is that is it. That is that is the amount of detail we have in this cockpit. Um, that's what's gonna go in there. That and a stick and a seat. So I am I am still maintaining my vote for worst flanker model ever. and amazed that this old kit went together with such easy seams. Um, we got a little bit to sand here on the nose, but you know what? Actually, these seams here follow these panel lines perfectly. So we might even be able to get away with, if we wanted to, probably get away with not even filling them and just using pre-shading and panel line wash to blend them right in and hide them and no one would ever know. Um, but things went together remarkably well. Now again, looking at the profile of this kit and the way that the leading edge extension is blended in and the size of it, this has much more of a MiG-29 look than a flanker look. And initially in the unboxing I said it looks like they took elements from a, a real, you know, a production flanker and the original T-10 prototype, but it's looking a lot actually like they took, they merged a MiG-29 and a flanker uh, when they made this kit. Um, very interesting to kind of see that. Um, there should not be as pronounced a, a change here. They should, the flanker should be much more blended, you know? Um, really, really weird. But so far, in terms of construction, I mean, there's no detail. Look at the cockpit, zero detail. Yeah, we're gonna put a, um, we're gonna put a seat in there. I meant to paint those halves before I got it assembled, but I was just getting so carried away with doing this because it's so simple and easy. I'll just have to spray some interior uh, blue-green in there before we move on, and I'll do that. But yeah, here we are already. Four steps in, and this was like 10 minutes, maybe, if that much. So, okay, let's keep going.
major fit problem I'm encountering is with the air intakes. Now, yes, I did. I do still thank them for making them one piece here, so I don't have to assemble anything. But the fit, connecting them to the rest of the duct in here for the engines is not great. Not great. So I'm still deciding. Am I going to work on fixing this? Because that's that's a lot of that's a major thing right there. You know, if we're just trying to build this. Um, straight out of the box, you know, to see what it looks like. I don't know, but you can see, so you, you have, you have to pick where the, where the misfit's going to be. Is it going to be, you're going to line it up with where it sits on the base, um, and then misfit here, or are you going to line this up so that you have a nice straight tube, but then you have overhang and, and misalignment here. Um, either way, you're going to have misalignment. Looking back on it, maybe I should have taken the misalignment here because it's going to be landing gear and landing gear doors, which might help you hide that better, and it's probably easier to blend that in. Um, I probably should have gone and taken that um, and then aligned this a little bit better because, yeah, you can sand this and make it make it smooth, but it's just, it's just more work. Um, so we'll see what I choose to do as we move on with the build, but still coming along. So here we've got our horizontal control surfaces all on there. Um, the wings, something looks a little wrong to me with the wings, and this is what I think. I think, I don't know what I think. I don't know, they're just, well, they're wrong. They're just wrong, that's the problem. I think they're more T10 type, not actual flanker type shape. I, I don't know, I'm gonna have to take a look. Maybe, maybe I'm just looking at it wrong because I feel like it's wrong. Maybe because it's missing the length of the nose. I don't know. Something, something just, I mean, there's lots that doesn't look right on this, but that, that, that wing is killing me. Anyway, at this point, the instructions tell us over here to um, put on one of the ventral fins and then start going on to do landing gear stuff. Obviously, we're going to save landing gear stuff for later on. So I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little jumping around because on step 13 here, they want us to adjust the final angle that they say that the ventral fins and the vertical stabilizers should have. Obviously, that's something I wanna do all at once to make sure everything's evened out. So I'm going to just jump around the instructions to make sure it gets done evenly. I'm gonna do both ventral fins and then I'm gonna do both vertical stabilizers to make sure I can match that angle. Now, normally when doing a flanker, um, you might want to consider painting all the metallic stuff around the engines first. But, however, comma, since the painting instructions on this one don't seem to include that, or at least the box art doesn't, um, yeah, the painting instructions here tell you to just go ahead and do the whole thing in paint. No um, heat plating or anything like that. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to do this exactly as the instructions tell us to. So I'm not even going to worry about doing all that masking and all that nice metallic look that we would do for a regular flanker model. We're gonna do it exactly as they tell us to. So uh, I'm not worried about having to mask around and inside of the vertical stabilizers or around the ventral fins or anything like that. It's gonna look really weird. It's gonna look really weird, but we're going to do it. So we will come back to the landing gear stuff as sort of a last step, you know, um, after painting and everything. We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll attach landing gear and landing gear doors.
You know, the more I look at this, the more I think they saw a picture of a Su-27 and they had, you know, some measurements for a MiG-29 and they just combined the two together. Um, Cause man, it sure does look MiG-29-ish with a Su-27 shape. That, that's that's what I'm going with now. That's that's what I'm going with. Do you, do you guys see it? Do you see what I'm seeing? I don't know. But So we have the angle on the ventral fins and the vertical stabilizers, even though they don't belong there. Well, I've got to be honest, though. I don't mind it. I don't mind the look. Not at all. So um, I'm going to move on to the next step. And uh, I think, yeah, I think we're putting a nose on because we're saving this till till the end too. Now, landing gear would sit about here. And so this is kind of a test I do to figure out if I need to put nose weight in. And, and, and on a lot of flankers, you kind of want to put some nose weight because a lot of flanker models are a little bit tail heavy. But this one doesn't seem to need it. Um, I might put just a little bit of weight in the nose just in case though because uh, it's, it's easier to have the weight and not need it than to discover you need some nose weight later. Um, but it looks like this model does not need that nose weight at all. But I'm just going to put a little, little tiny, tiny bit of weight in the big bulby nose just in case. So I don't know what these are supposed to be. They don't look like anything. They don't look like sorbetsia jamming pods. They don't look like launch rails. We don't have missiles to put on them, but they're there. They're there. So moving on. Guys, I think we'll pause this right here, keep this short and digestible, but here's some pictures of what a real early model flanker should actually look like. I hope you found this a little bit fun and entertaining. For all you guys out there building your own, keep building them build them well as always and join me right back here for part two of this build real soon see you there